What's up? For those of you that don't know, that's a nice short contracted form of what's up or what's happening, all alternatives to hello. Super informal. The best way to respond to it's up is nothing much. You? Hope all is well with you guys. This is, of course, Stephanie from Apex Languages. Today on Ornery Orthography, we're going to continue talking about periods and what happens when they're not where they're supposed to be. Ooh, scary. That's right. Fragments and run-ons and comma splices. Oh my. Last time, I introduced you to a bunch of useful punctuation marks. In fact, we filled up the whole page. And then we narrowed down our focus to the ones that specifically end sentences. Those are the period, the question mark, the exclamation point or exclamation mark, and the ellipses. Let's see how they make a difference in this sentence. I'll see you later. With a period, it's a normal neutral statement. It's the standard, in fact. When in doubt, always go for the period, whose job it is to simply tell you, let's put the brakes on, this sentence is over. Nothing more to see here, people move on with your lives. Exclamation marks, on the other hand, are all about emotion. So the sentence is still a statement, but it's no longer neutral. You're excited or you're scared or you're angry. So now when I exclaim this sentence, it will probably sound something more like, I'll see you later. Or maybe even, I'll see you later. If you're going to start a fight somewhere, who knows? Question marks stand in for the raised inflection at the end of a question that you hear when someone speaks. It's very useful because we obviously can't hear any changes in the writer's voice when reading, although we can and should think it in our heads. Finally, ellipses or dot 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 suggest or emphasize that the writer is not saying everything on their mind. Something's missing. Something's been left out. They should only be used like in this sentence in place of a period in informal writing. But they're also very common in formal reports when quoting someone else to indicate that part of the quote has been left out. We talked about fragments last week, broken, isolated, or incomplete part, so a sentence fragment is missing either the subject or the verb. Let's take a look. I have four phrases that you might hear if you're if you're texting someone or if you're just having an informal conversation. OK, you tell me whether they are complete sentences or fragments. Because remember, just because someone says something doesn't mean it's grammatical. When you're talking, you're not always using complete sentences. When you're talking, that's OK, because talking is informal. When you're writing, it's not OK. So in a business setting, these would not be acceptable. You OK? OK. You OK? Is that a complete sentence or a fragment? It's a fragment. What are we missing? You OK? We have a subject, but no verb. Are you OK? OK, are you OK? Now I've got my verb. They coming. Is that a complete sentence or a fragment? It's a fragment. Here we've got the subject, but again, no verb. Oh, but teacher coming is a verb. No, it's not. OK, remember. ING is never, ever, ever a verb. It can be used as part of a compound verb, but by itself, you cannot use it like a verb. They are coming. Okay, are is the verb. Coming in the sentence is actually more of an adjective. Okay, so they are coming. Now it's complete. See you later. Also a fragment. Okay, why? There's no subject. Okay, see you later. No subject. I will see you later. I is a subject and actually will becomes my verb. See uh, is an infinitive. Infinitives are um, verbal nouns. So will is actually the verb in this sentence. Okay, I will see you later. Finally, go. Is it a sentence or a fragment? It's actually a subject. Go. 
is the shortest sentence in the English language. But there's no subject, teacher. Well, that's because it's a command form. And command forms, the imperative, is the only form in English where you do not need the subject. The subject is understood. Okay, so a you, you go, is understood. In this case, it's grammatical. It's okay. So go. The, the, it's a hidden subject and the verb is to go. Okay. That was good practice. Finally, let's learn something new. What is a run-on? A run-on is something that continues on longer than it should. Okay, so a run-on sentence keeps running on and on and on and on. It doesn't stop. There's no period to say, put the brakes on. Let's show you an example. So for the sentence, find me my subject and my verb. Well, they're right at the beginning. That wasn't too hard, right? I liked. I liked the movie. It's really action-packed. But wait, there is a second subject and verb. Okay, don't get confused by uh, contractions. It is really two words. It is. It's my subject and verb all in one. So I and it are both main subjects. Liked and is are both main verbs. Uh-oh, we got a big problem. Okay, this is a run-on. Okay, but basically what it means is that you have two sentences, or potentially more, but just one period. It's not enough. Oh no, we've got a big problem. How can we fix our run-on? Don't panic. I've got three options for you. We can either add a period, a semicolon, or a conjunction. So let's see these in action. Let's start with the period. I like the movie. It is really action-packed. Without the period, really, the way that you're reading it is, I like the movie. It is really action-packed. That period makes you pause. It tells you, hold on. New idea coming. Okay. And this is really the simplest solution to this problem. Uh, the only thing you got to remember is adding the period and then capitalizing the letter next to it. As far as semicolon goes, uh, I've mentioned, I mentioned last week, semicolons mostly are just like periods. Well, we'll have a whole video just on semicolons. They serve a very similar function to pe periods. And so you could use it here. The thing is that semicolons are less common. In a large part, I think, because native speakers aren't very familiar with them, you don't want to have a lot of semicolons in your paragraphs, in your writing. But once in a while, it is a valid option. It's a very grammatical option. Finally, the conjunction. I like the movie because it is really action-packed. When you have a bunch of really short sentences, your writing becomes very choppy. You don't want all your sentences to be short. You don't want all of your sentences to be really long. You want a mix of everything. And so sometimes adding a period isn't the best option just because of, of the stylistic choices. Using a conjunction, conjunctions are words that combine sentences together, okay? Um, is a great option for building longer sentences. It's a little trickier though, because you have to find the conjunction that works just right. Are, are you going to use a coordinating to, uh, conjunction or a subordinating conjunction? Oh, trust me, that's a whole long conversation, uh, transition words and things like that. So here in this sentence, I've chose a, a subordinating conjunction because with subordinating conjunctions, I don't need a comma. With coordinating conjunctions, uh, they're recommended, okay? So I'll show you some other ones afterwards, but because works great in this sentence. I like the movie because it is really action-packed. When you're choosing a conjunction, you wanna think about the relationship between both sides of uh, the, you know, the two different sentences. How are they related? This is a cause and effect relationship. Therefore, because. Very similar to the run-on is the comma splice. Now, when you splice something, that means that you join two things together. In grammar, the comma splice, therefore, is when you combine two sentences 
with a comma. Okay, the problem is a lot of times when you splice things together, you splice two branches together, uh, things like that. It's a good thing. Comma splices are bad because the comma isn't strong enough. It's not what the comma is designed to do. And the next set of videos will all be about commas. That'll make more sense when we get there. Okay, just for the moment, trust me, comma splices are bad. Uh, let me show you. I'll go with you. They can't, though. Well, one of these commas is bad. Find my subject and my verb for me, please. I'll is I will, right? Can, can't is cannot, so I've expanded a little bit. Once again, I have two sets of subjects and verbs. I, subject, will, verb. They, subject, can, verb. Okay, that's a problem. It's too many. The difference between a run-on and a comma splice is with a run-on, you have two sentences put together and there's nothing separating them. In the comma splice, there's a comma separating them. So you can see the comma between you and they. It's not supposed to be there. It doesn't, it, again, it's just not strong enough. What you need, well, one of our options is a period, right? So. That's an easy fix. Once again, periods, easy fix. I will go with you, period. They cannot, though. Okay, and don't forget, capitalize your T. Semicolon's another option, although again, not the most common one. Then finally, conjunction. Okay, you could say, I will go with you, and they cannot. Now, and is a coordinating conjunction. Um, there are seven coordinating conjunctions. The most common are and, but, uh, and so. All right. Um, well, you, or, or, or is also a coordinating conjunction. So the rest are subordinating, subordinating conjunctions, and they do not need the comma with coordinating conjunctions like and, but, so, or. You're supposed to have them. And that's a conversation, too, I'll talk about with commas. I'll have a video. Um, but I have a comma and an and. And is a nice coordinating conjunction because it's basically a plus sign. You can use it with anything. It's not always the best conjunction, however. So I'll go with you, and they cannot. Again, think about the relationship between your sentences. I will go with you, but they cannot. Okay, that makes more sense in this sentence because the two parts are contrasting, they're opposites. Okay, so again, just think about relationship between your sentences when you have to choose a conjunction. Are you just adding extra information? Are you contrasting? Is it cause or effect? Those are the, the big, big ones, and for adding, but for contrast, so for cause and effect. Let's get just a little bit more practice on your own. Tell me, is this sentence a run on? While well, walking to the school in the rain, my feet got very wet. Well, where's my subject? Where's my verb? While walking. This is an adverb clause, okay? And we're gonna see these. While walking, there's no verb here. Walking, ing, remember, is not a verb. So you have a subject, my feet, and my verb is got wet, okay? That's one subject, one verb. It's a complete sentence, hooray. How about this one? It was raining outside, my feet got very wet. Well, where's my subject and verb? It was raining, my feet got very wet. You see how the beginning here has its own subject, has its own verb, and then you've got another subject and verb. That's where we run into problems. So it is a run on. How do we fix it? Easy peasy, add a period. Or a little harder, you could again say it was raining outside and my feet got very wet, but it's better when possible to choose the conjunction that better sit, uh, fits the situation. So is the best conjunction to use in this sentence. So it was raining outside, so my feet got very wet. 
Get out there and keep practicing. Look for fragments and run-ons and commas wherever you are. See if you can catch your friends or local businesses messing up. Maybe even the evening news. Thanks as always for watching and check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day. Stay healthy and stay safe.